Mr. Thompson here. We're looking at U.S. History Standard 10. Identify the legal, social, and political dimensions of Reconstruction. In particular, we're looking at Part A of that standard. Compare and contrast presidential Reconstruction with congressional Reconstruction, including the significance of Lincoln's assassination and Johnson's impeachment. The end of the Civil War brought with it this monumental task of economically, physically, socially, and politically repairing the United States. Questions existed about how to most effectively and efficiently make this happen. There were two different approaches to Reconstruction. Presidential Reconstruction uh, promoted an approach that was more lenient toward the South and their readmission, so coming back to the Union. Congressional Reconstruction blamed the South for the war and wanted punishment for causing the Civil War. Their approach, so Congressional Reconstruction, required much more submission by the South uh, to be readmitted, so to be brought back to the Union. Both Presidential and Congressional Reconstruction understood the importance of repairing all aspects of the nation. Where they differed was in the details on how to carry out uh, this repairing, this rebuilding, this reconstruction. Reconstruction became a conflict between radical Republicans and Presidents Lincoln and Johnson, who proposed a more moderate approach to the former Confederate states. The radical Republicans wanted to severely punish the South for the Civil War. Lincoln and the moderates wanted to quickly bring the South back to the Union. The process of rebuilding the South began before the Civil War ended. Presidential Reconstruction refers to when Lincoln proposed the 10% plan in 1863. This plan called on southern states to complete three tasks in order to restore their status to the United States. First, they had to ratify the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. Second, states had to reject secession, so leaving. Third, when 10% of the voters from 1860 had taken an oath of allegiance to the United States, the southern state would be restored to the Union. Radical Republicans objected Lincoln's plan, saying it was too lenient and it didn't protect the rights of newly freed slaves. In response, they proposed the Wade Davis Bill. In addition to ratifying the 13th Amendment, so abolishing slavery, this proposed law would have required that 50% of the voters of a southern state have to swear loyalty to the United States. Southern supporters believed that this was an impossible task designed to keep Southerners dominated by Northern political interests. Lincoln vetoed the Wade Davis bill. Before Lincoln could reintroduce his plan, he was assassinated. Lincoln was shot and killed on April 14, 1865, a few days after Robert E. Lee had surrendered at Appomattox. The assassination took place at Ford's Theater, where Lincoln and his wife were attending a play. John Wilkes Booth was an actor who supported the Confederacy and shot the president in anger over the Southern loss in the Civil War. Lincoln was a skilled politician and was ready to negotiate a flexible solution for the Reconstruction issue. 
His assassination resulted in more political turmoil. The chaos was in part due to the new president set to fill Lincoln's untimely loss, Andrew Johnson. Abraham Lincoln chose Andrew Johnson to be his vice president for his second term in office. Johnson was a Democrat from Tennessee who remained loyal to the Union during the Civil War, even though he was a supporter of slavery. His loyalty to the Union was about bringing down the wealthy plantation owners. Johnson believed these aristocrats, so these upper-class, uh, wealthy plantation owners restricted the small farmer's ability to make money. Johnson was added to Lincoln's 1864 presidential ticket because he was a Democrat from the South uh, and he would be a symbol of goodwill uh, at the close of the Civil War. Lincoln wanted to send a message of reconciliation. After the assassination of Lincoln, the Reconstruction task fell to the new president. Andrew Johnson's plan for Reconstruction was similar to Lincoln's. The new president sought to rapidly integrate the southern states back to the Union by appointing governors he knew that would make the required political changes. There was significant opposition to this approach by radical Republican members of Congress who wanted the South dealt with more harshly. The congressional election of 1866 returned a radical Republican majority to Congress. The group began pushing forward bills uh, that favored their position uh, and Johnson vetoed each one. Of course, Congress and Johnson were at odds with each other. Radical Republicans in Congress pushing forward these bills, Johnson vetoing, turning down, saying, no Congress. This political struggle quickly escalated to a level not previously seen. In addition to vetoing Republican legislation that kept coming to his desk, Johnson was also firing Republicans uh, from the executive offices uh, that had held positions during Lincoln's administration. To preserve the Republican influence in the executive office, Congress passed the Tenure of Office Act over Johnson's veto in 1867. This law required Senate approval before the president could remove a federal official or military commander from a position in government. Johnson ignored the law and fired Republican Secretary of War Edward Stanton from his post. Congress responded by impeaching Johnson for breaking a federal law but failed to remove him from office by one vote. The impeachment hearings lasted for months and sidetracked the government's more important reconstruction efforts. Because the Congress had a radical Republican majority, they were actually able to overturn any veto that Johnson had on a proposed law. Rather than remove the president, since they were able to overturn any of his vetoes anyway, they simply waited out his term in office. This arrangement, so the radical Republican majority overturning any of Johnson's vetoes, ushered in the time period known as Congressional Reconstruction. The first Reconstruction Act, which was passed over Johnson's veto in 1867, divided the South into five military districts uh, that were run by military governors. The law turned the clock back on any Reconstruction measures passed by Southern states. To be readmitted to the Union, the Southern states were required to grant 
former slaves, and free blacks suffrage. So voting. The states were also required to hold open elections for white and black representatives to the state constitutional convention. The purpose of the state constitutional conventions was to create new state constitutions that recognized the three Reconstruction Amendments to the U.S. Constitution, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. By 1870, all former Confederate states had been readmitted to the Union. Federal troops remained in the South uh, to enforce the provisions of Reconstruction and to protect former slaves from mob violence. The Reconstruction process was heated. Both presidential and congressional Reconstruction intended to repair the badly fractured nation uh, physically, politically, and socially. However, the plans differed on how harshly the South should be treated. Presidents Lincoln and Johnson preferred a more lenient approach. The radical Republicans of Congress wanted a harsh punishment against the South for causing the war. 